Hello viewers, this is Editorial, the ATN News Weekly, where we talk life. We talk issues that shape life and issues that shake life. I'm your host, Richard Marino, and my guest at this time is Air Commodore Ishfaq Ilahi Choudhury, Security Analyst. Welcome to the show, sir. So we have to start with our security issues first. On the eve of the immortal Ekushe, month of February, you know, the very traditional book fair, the Ekushe book fair gets started tomorrow regarding about the things that happened last year. What do you feel should be the security aspects this year? The incident that happened last year uh, with uh, Obijit's uh, murder, which happened just outside the book fair. And uh, as soon after he had visited the book fair and had been uh, just been out. So, uh, and that started a number of, after that we had seen a number of killings and uh, many of those killings have not been solved and we could not uh, apprehend the criminals. But we generally believe that those people who are a kind of uh, extremist elements in Bangladesh, uh, they had been looking forward to such opportunities. Uh, we don't want those things to happen again. So we need to take a number of precautionary measures. You know, book fair, there will be a huge crowd from day one till the time, the whole of month of February it goes on. And it reaches a climax somewhere on the 21st February when we have these other functions also. So I, I expect that the, uh, you know, the law and order authority, police, RAVs and others, they should uh, set up a number of, you know, uh, checkpoints. Uh, although we want everyone to go and we don't want to create an obstruction, but we need to be watchful of the people Ekomoto, who are going. Sir, uh, we have seen that law enforcement has not been what we call, uh, where we can easily call highly successful yeah. in nabbing the people, you know, yes. uh, involved. But at least what measures can they take? Preemptive measures. Preemptive measures uh, is uh, one of the, uh, is, number one is the, you know, security of the whole area, uh, whether it's uh, uh, entry gates uh, or also the security cameras they should be installed and there should be continuous monitoring plus i would say that uh, security forces alone cannot do it we need to have volunteers right from the university boy scouts or uh, bncc and other things to assist the security uh, elements and that must be very close uh, link between the two and general public also should be number one cautious and they should be also observant if people notice some elements who have gone inside or are, are around, they should, they must inform the police and police must take action immediately. If you remember what happened in Abidis case, the police came out with the excuse that we thought it's a local fight going on. Why should somebody be watching a local fight and not intervene? And uh, later on it came out to be so serious an incident. So I need to, uh, you know, everybody must be proactive, whether you are a bookseller with a stall whether you are a visitor, whether you are a volunteer, and whether you are a uh, policeman on duty. You must be proactive and before a thing can happen. And not only this uh, security of the, uh, you know, personnel, but there are other elements also. For example, this is going to be a very crowded place with a lot of people going and coming. And we have seen an uh, incident like it happened in the Bengali New Year's night, you know, uh, harassment, sexual harassment and molestation of uh, females. Now here also there will be huge crowd and I'm sure there are some bad elements in our society who would like to take advantage of this. But here again we got to be very cautious to nip the, you know, uh, nip it in the bud. It is good news that somebody has been arrested recently who was involved in uh, uh, Bengali New Year's uh, incident. So like this, you know, we must uh, stop uh, all such things. Then there are other security issues like fire, you know, there are a lot of shops very closely and there are uh, books are there, lot of you know temporary electrical connections of the fire brigade and civil defense organizations. They must be absolutely on the on the dot. And also another thing is the crowd control stampede. It's a very confined small place, and you know uh, hundreds of thousands of people they flock in. So any type of stampede and all can also create a lot of security. Sir, hazards. that very sensitive issue of molestation. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel law enforcement should act on that particular issue? Uh, as we saw in the uh, New Year's uh, photo shots, there were 
uh, if you have sufficient security cameras and also uh, the the uh, those cameras must be functional. They were saying that you know we have seen people but we could not uh, identify them. Their pictures were hazy. But then we have the technology available now to make those pictures sharp enough. So uh, we got to be uh, alert and any complaint before it even happens we can identify people. People should be at once uh, you know uh, nabbed and you know uh, interrogated and isolated uh, so that you know, they don't, uh, you know, you've got to catch one or two. That's good enough. That will deter anybody else from doing that. But if you don't do that, then it will spread. They will say that, well, we have an opportunity here uh, to do what we want to do. But uh, this must be checked at the beginning. Sir, the chief of our Dhaka city police, he has uh, requested the mayor uh, for, you know, enough sufficient lighting during <clears throat> that. Do you feel this is a very good aspect? Yeah, but I don't know whether mayor will be able to do that or not. But I, uh, uh, I'm sure. I mean, we need to have enough lighting and backup support. You know, uh, like any time if there is a power failure, there must be instant uh, power backup, individual stalls as well as the whole area, so that uh, nobody can take advantage of that. So you feel if these things are put in place, yeah, then there are chances of any sort of untoward incidents happening. Well, one cannot say that there are no chances, but we got to make it difficult for any culprits doing that. So we, we need enough lighting, we need uh, the security, we need uh, proper cameras, we need uh, multiple cover-ups, then we need these uh, firefighting elements, we need the volunteers, and we need cooperation of the people. People must cooperate and every citizen must be aware of his responsibilities. And together we can make it safe and, uh, you know, uh, enjoyable for people rather than, you know, being an exercise in futility. So, sir, you are optimistic on this yeah. note. So, now to shift the focus a little, uh, the police have requested the Prime Minister recently uh, to have the armed police battalion stationed, that is already stationed at the airport, to employ them fully instead of going for a joint force to maintain airport security. What are your thoughts on this matter? Right now, what I have seen is that there are too many organizations doing the same job. I mean, and nobody knows where my responsibility ends and somebody else's responsibility starts. And also, there are not enough coordination. And that is why, uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of allegations of uh, people missing their uh, valuables, uh, smuggling, uh, smuggled items coming in, not being checked, then also the security of the aircraft itself, the passengers. Now, there cannot be any compromise on that because if we uh, don't do that, there are agencies, the, every airline and every country has the agencies too are monitoring our airport. Even if we say we are very happy, that is not be good enough unless you get the reports. Sir, we will come so, back right to this point on airport security, but we need the commercial now. Viewers, we go for the commercial now. Stay with us, don't go away. Welcome back viewers, welcome to Editorial. And my guest at this time, Air Komoda Ishfaq Ilahi Choudhury, who is also a security analyst. Welcome back, sir. And we were talking about that airport yes, security we, bit. Yes, we are talking about the airport security. Now, that is a, a very important, you know, uh, issue because uh, unless you are able to satisfy the uh, aviation world that your airport is safe, many won't even come here to uh, bring their aircraft. And it will, of course, the shake the confidence of the passenger. Fortunately for Bangladesh, nothing very serious has yet happened, but you know, that they always, these uh, international terrorists, they target the softer targets. And if they can't do it in uh, London, they can do it in, in a third world countries, or if they can't do it in Paris, maybe they can do it here. So right now what we have, we have a number of agencies working in the air, airport area, all on security issues. So uh, we can take examples for countries like India or USA or UK, where there is a specialized force who are looking after the security of the airfield and the uh, airport and the tarmac. So, uh, and they are highly trained force, uh, you know, uh, they can, uh, if there is a hijacking, if there are, uh, you know, uh, some hostage situation, 
uh, from there to the smuggling to the explosives weapons uh, you know carrying in the aircraft or any other activities that happens and how to quickly respond and catch uh, the culprits without harming the passengers and the other you know those are very important issues so we got to have that now that will be needing a special force special force but that can be composed of the you know, police uh, uh, trained elite police force uh, you know you can have the military from the military from the uh, national security agencies and other but it must have a command headquarter and must have a command and control chain where they report you see so unfortunately we still probably don't have that uh, and that's why there is confusion when the things go all right everybody's so happy when things go wrong then there are blaming and counter oh no this was not my job it was his job he didn't do it properly so and so so we need to work it out but we have the examples of other countries so we can follow that so sir as a very senior air force officer you are of the opinion or of the view that a joint force is joint much force, than joint one. force, joint force composed of the specialist people, where there will be uh, uh, elite, you know, police element can be there, army element can be there, air force element can be there, customs and security elements will be there, and their their job will be to ensure security, which in for which means not only the physical security but also means that the uh, narcotics don't come in go out weapons don't come in go out explosives don't go in the aircraft, aircraft and if any hostage situation happens if hijacking happens they respond very quickly so all those training will need you know a very specialized training the people may uh, come from various services but everybody will need to be trained and then you need an organogram where they all report to a central agency and you know the command and control is held all the time so talking about that explosive part, yes. you said so that explosives don't come in. What is the state of militancy now? In Bangladesh. In Bangladesh. Uh, okay, I mean we we are continue. This is not only in Bangladesh. I mean this is as you know is a worldwide phenomena, and uh, happily uh, for Bangladesh, uh, we we always compare with in our neighbourhood. Uh, if you compare Afghanistan, Pakistan, and India, we are in a much better state. Uh, there is a, uh, if you go on the website, you will see there is a uh, militancy, uh, threat of militancy, there is a scale. You know, one, number one, maybe Syria, number two, Iraq, Somalia, all this. Then, but Pakistan is pretty high, I think it's now number five. India is around 13 or 14. We are now on the, I think, 25 or 26. But that doesn't make me happy. Why can't we be the, the best of the lot? Why should we be 25? Why not 53? The lower is the scale is the better. We are rising. I mean, the militancy scale was a little higher a few years back, but we are rising. But as you know, on the very recently, we have had incidents like uh, some of the uh, laborers who are some of the uh, migrant workers have been deported from Singapore. On the uh, Singapore government sent them back because they were they, they alleged that they are connected with some uh, international. Uh, militant organizations like uh, Al Qaeda, IS, and all. Not they are connected, but they are being inspired. They are having meeting, regular meetings, and all. So they are, the Singapore didn't, government didn't want them to be there. So Singapore, you know, is a democratic country, highly civilized, and very highly technical, uh, you know, um, uh, state or country, whatever you call it. So they won't be sending people back just on uh, mere allegation. They must have monitored, they must have. Uh, but the unfortunate part here has been that in Bangladesh we are not sure. We came to know only when the Singapore government lost the protest. And by the time, uh, and it came in their newspapers. Uh, and uh, by the time, uh, then we came to know that they have already arrived in Bangladesh a few days back. And uh, some of them have been held up in the police custody. Some of them have been sent back home uh, uh, under observation. Sir, there. our government says there is no IS. I mean, and uh, those people, issue. most of them belong to Ansarullah Bangla team. So, sir, what do you have to say regarding this? Well, uh, if there is no IS, I am happy. That's hap I mean, all of us. I mean, we. But let me say that these are the ideas. What's what's happening today in the world, under various names, the ideas are that by the use of force, which they call jihad, we are going to establish an Islamic state, Islamic state across the world. There will be no border. I mean, it may start from Bangladesh, it may start from Pakistan, it may start from Iraq, Syria, but ultimately the aim is to have an Islamic state, they say, according to them, you know, 
quote unquote Islamic state where Sharia law will be imposed and it will be bound on everybody including countries where Muslims are not majority like India or UK they, they will be forced to be uh, you know that sort of idea is still you know uh, I would say that not even 99 percent Muslims believe in that because we believe in a world where everybody lives and the and the geographical entity of the state and the you know or world order we believe in the world world order but there are people who are being motivated who are being uh, you know uh, inducted into these ideas and because of the uh, universalness of the communication system especially through uh, internet and uh, YouTube and all the other things they, they, we cannot stop this induction and now in Bangladesh there is a, you know that the huge youth population and many of them are unfortunately we can't employ them we can't provide them uh, the proper education we can't uh, uh, arrange for them their uh, entertainment their sports culture when people get this sort of a bit of frustrated with life and they they can't fulfill their dream they get into this sort of anarchist I would call them a kind of anarchist anarchist ideas where they say everything is wrong in this society and I need to change Sir, given and the I fact of use uh, violence. Know, our government given the fact that it lacks you know the technology and other things related to curb these sort of things how do you feel it is acting on terrorism and terror financing? Right now terrorism we are uh, acting like a fire brigade you know and something happens we just go and nab them arrest them this is necessary this is necessary the police actions but what we are still not being able to do and which is very much within our means is to raise a nationwide consciousness and a nationwide uh, you know um, uh, counter narratives nationwide uh, to counter this uh, sir the thing. terror financing part we terror have financing yes government has uh, established uh, a number of monitoring organizations i do know like you want to uh, operate an account here you want to uh, you know, uh, transfer money, uh, the central bank and other bank, everybody has to answer. But, you know, in Bangladesh still today, there are a lot of uh, funding going on uh, in the uh, name of religious, you know, um, um, institutions where you really, people who are sending money are not really financing terror, but they are doing it in the act of God. But how that money is transferred, how that money ends up and where that money ends up, we don't know. This is especially true for our migrant population. They are very important source of foreign exchange of Bangladesh. But unfortunately, when they are living alone there, especially in the Middle East and isolated from their families, not connected, they are vulnerable to the continuous, yeah, that God has given you opportunity to earn. Why didn't you send some money uh, back home in the way of God? And that money, we cannot really ensure that where it is ending up. Sir, on this note, we have come to the end of this very interesting conversation, sir. But we will have you back the first time we get. Thank you. Thank you. Viewers, we have come to the end of this edition of Editorial. But we will be with you next week. Stay tuned to ATN News. From me, Richard Moreno, it's goodbye. <laughs>